I live right outside the historic town of Gettysburg. For those who don't know, it's a small town in southern Pennsylvania that was once one of the major battle locations during the Civil War. Every year, thousands of tourists flock in to visit the battlefields and the monuments. But I have been living in this area my entire life, so the military park was really just a place I liked to go and walk my dog. My outlook would change after attending a backyard party at a house that basically backed up to the military park. It was at the home of a longtime friend of mine's, and a bunch of people that I knew from around town attended. After around 1 a.m., the party started to fizzle down. A few of his close friends stuck around to help clean up, and we agreed that another beer or two would be in order. There was about seven of us in total on that October night, and the subject of the paranormal ended up being tossed into the conversation. Being that we were so close to the military park, that topic was bound to come up. One of the girls that was with us jokingly brought up how she wished we had a Ouija board. She thought it would be cool to try and contact the soldiers that were lost all those years ago. It didn't seem like a good idea to me, but my friend being the jerk that he was produced one almost immediately. I couldn't help but to think, who just has a freaking Ouija board lying around? Before you knew it, we were all on a spontaneous hike into the woods behind his house with the Ouija board in hand. In the past, my buddy had used his metal detector to find all sorts of cool artifacts from the war, so we knew that these very grounds had been the site of major sadness and carnage in the past. After about a quarter mile trek down a narrow trail that led from the wooded area behind his house, we ended up walking into a small clearing in the woods. We decided that this would be the best place for a seance. To be honest, I lived here my whole life, and not once had I experienced anything paranormal. I was actually very excited to see what was going to become of this Ouija board experience. We used the flashlights on our phone to light up the area. It actually made things a lot more spooky because the darkness where the light could not penetrate was forbidding to say the least. I did not participate in the actual game. I acted as a spotter. My job was to write out what was spelled on the board and keep an eye out for weird happenings around us. It didn't take long after the game got going for shit to start getting out of hand. The first few things that the board communicated were names of what we assumed to be the soldiers. Then words like general and cannon. I thought they were faking it until I seen something move quickly out the corner of my eye. When I turned my head to look, I caught a glimpse of a tall shadowy figure disappearing into the thick of the brush. My heart skipped a beat as I stared at the location where the entity had disappeared. My attention was called back to the Ouija board when my friend asked, are you getting this? I had not been paying attention for a couple of minutes or so, and in that time the word help had been spelled out, and then disturbance. Our friend Sarah started to hyperventilate when she said that she could feel something touch her. She jumped up flailing around as if there was a bug on her, but nothing happened to be there. That's when I saw it. I completely froze, wondering if anybody could see what I was witnessing right now. Behind our friend Sarah stood three clear apparitions of Confederate soldiers. I mean clear as day, down to the uniform. The only thing is, they seemed to be off color-wise, very pale and transparent. They stood there like statues, just peering forward at us. Am I the only one seeing this? I remember saying as my voice shook. Everybody in the group looked over to me, then followed my eyes in the direction in which I was staring. Everybody fell silent, which let me know they could see it too. This is what touched Sarah's back and caused her to freak out earlier. The silence was broken by a loud boom, which I only could describe as cannon fire. The earth underneath us shook violently. We all literally screamed like children, feeling like suddenly we were in the battle ourselves. The spirits of the soldiers disappeared after this. Then the sound of what I think was an approaching army echoed throughout the forest. 
Surrounded by the sound of movement across the dense woodland floor sent me into a state of panic I had never been in. I physically became ill and had to fight not to pass out due to an energy coming over me that made me feel extremely weak. One of the guys that we were with yelled out that we had to get out of here. And just like that, we all started to run back down the trail towards my friend's yard. Running down the trail, we tripped over rocks and loose branches. When we got back to my friend's yard, we ran straight through it and into his house. The next two hours would be spent recounting the events which carried us well into the wee hours of the morning. To think that something so terrible happened on what was once just simple farmland deeply saddened me. All those men who lost their lives back then are bound to this land forever. The conclusion that we came to at the end of the night was that Ouija boards actually do work if used at the right time and place. The second thing we learned, most importantly, is that if you want to experience the paranormal, then take a trip to Gettysburg. When I first started dating my wife, she lived in an apartment above an old bar in town. The building had been around since the 1800s and had been used for multiple different things. It started out as a local infirmary, then a post office, and after a few other things, ended up being one of my town's oldest surviving pubs. I'm not gonna lie, the setup was pretty sweet. To be able to have a few drinks in a cool dive bar, and then walk up two flights of stairs and be able to crawl into bed was pretty unmatched. The bar would often have different events, such as game nights. Trivia would take place, and different board games would be set up on the high-top tables and booths for patrons to play. We attended regularly, and after another night of fun games and trivia, we didn't want the fun to end. When it was all over, we said our goodbyes and went through the side exit into the small lobby where the door was that accessed the stairs to her apartment. We got in and got settled, but we both were not sleepy. She said, why don't we play another game? I went for the PS4 controller when she said, no, I have something else for us to play. She went into her hall closet and got out a Ouija board. I'm pretty sure I was too drunk for something like that at the moment, but she insisted and I caved to the pressure. We had been dating for a while, but I never knew she had anything like that. To be honest, me growing up in a Christian household, I believed in spirits or ghosts or whatever you want to call them. I also believed things like that should not be toyed with. I had seen my fair share of scary movies and I did not want to be in one of those type of situations. She set the board up and explained the rules. We agreed that since we were in an old building, we would stick to asking questions about that only. And that basically was to sort of narrow down our possible encounters. She dimmed the lights and lit a few candles to set the mood. I always thought her apartment was old and creepy anyway, and this was not helping in the least. The very first question we got a response when she asked, was this building haunted? The planchet moved to the yes much faster than I would have liked it to. I told her that this was her doing, but she insisted it wasn't. After that, with each question, the vibe became more and more off. What's your name, she said. Who's here with us? The planchet glided across the board and began to spell out what would end up being my girlfriend's name. She looked to be excited at this revelation, but I was absolutely terrified. Then without us asking a question, the planchet starts to move again. My name was slowly spelled out next. I was pretty much over this game. The look of surprise on my girlfriend's face told me that she really was not controlling the piece on the board. Right when I began to protest that this was not fun anymore, the light bulb in the lamp next to us exploded with a loud pop, sending fragments of glass all over the place. We were now completely in the dark, besides the two or three candles that were lit up around the room. The flames on the wicks began to dance as if a breeze was coming through the place, but there were no windows open. We both were spooked beyond belief, staring at each other wide-eyed, neither one of us knowing what to do next. 
I got up to flip on the main light switch in the living area, but to my horror, nothing happened. I flipped the switch multiple times to no avail. My girlfriend called out to me. I looked over to where she was sitting and she was just staring at the coffee table where the board was. You might want to come look at this. I walked back over to where she was sitting and I kid you not, the planchette was now moving by itself very slowly with neither one of our hands on it. We watched as it landed on hello. Once it got there, one of the candles burning just went out. Then a loud bang could be heard coming from the other side of the wall. The thing is, this is a standalone building and her apartment is on the third floor. There was no way that anything could make an impact like that way up there. And even more so because it was 2.30 in the morning. I had enough. I grabbed the board, threw it back in the box, and grabbed my girl's hand. We were getting out of there. I snatched my keys off the hook by the front door. Then we hurried down the stairway. We would stay at my place that night. The next afternoon, we headed back to her place. We had gotten a good night's rest and breakfast. I would almost say that we had almost forgot about the situation that took place the night before until we walked into her apartment and found it completely destroyed. Her things were scattered about everywhere and she began to cry after seeing her place so messed up. We figured someone must have broken in after we had left last night. I was in her bedroom starting to pick up clothes that had been torn out of her closet when she calls me back into the living room. When I rounded the corner into the living space where we were hanging out last night, I see my girlfriend standing over the coffee table. I remember asking her what she was looking at as I made my way over to where she was standing, entranced. I almost passed out. The Ouija board that I had put away before we left was back on the table, set up like I had never touched it. Everything in the house was trashed, but here this thing sat on the table neatly placed with the planchet on hello. One night a few buddies and I were sitting around a bonfire drinking when the topic of Ouija boards came up in conversation. We all had our difference in opinions, but when my buddy Sean said he had one inside and he can prove that it really worked, all fell silent. We all looked around at each other, half spooked and half amused by the proposition. Bring it out here then, I said, when nobody had spoken up after a few seconds had went by. He ran inside and appeared moments later with an old tattered box, which I assumed the board was in. He sat it on the small glass table next to the fire. When the firelight illuminated the Ouija board, I could tell that it was very old, being that it was one of the wooden kind. He said that it had been his grandmother's and that she had had it since she was a child. He had received it when she passed away. It didn't have any instructions along with it, so we went on YouTube for the rules and then we began. At first, we weren't taking it too seriously. All four of us had two fingers on the planchet, while we asked silly questions and made light of the situation. That's until Sean asked, was there any spirits here on his family's property? The planchet slowly started to move, almost effortlessly, over to the yes marked on the board. The weird thing is, when it started moving, we all looked up at the same time, with bewildered expressions on our faces. After a few seconds of it being on yes, I spoke up and said next, how many? After a second or two, the piece began to move slowly to the number three, then over to the one, then back to the three again. I began to feel sick inside. When this was revealed, Sean ripped his hand away from the planchet, but I figured it was worse for him because he had to live there. My other two buddies never took their hands away so we continued. But before we could ask the next question, the board began to spell out a message to us. Come back. We all looked over to Sean, who was now looking pale to say the least. It's talking to you, Sean, our one buddy said aloud. Sean reluctantly made his way back over to the small table where the board was placed. 
He placed his fingers back on the planchet, and we carried on. He murmured the next question, asking if any of the spirits were bad or evil. The word sum was spelled out, then the word demon, then forest. Now I was completely freaked out. None of us removed our hands off the board because I believe at this point we were all paralyzed with fear. The planches slowly started to move again. It spelled out, leave. I heard us all whisper it under our breath, trying to make sense of everything. Sean said to me, one more question. He had a look in his eyes like I had never seen before. Who's talking to us right now? What is your name? This time the planchette moved rather quickly to three different letters. G, M, A. Grandma, he said, almost in a scream. Things had just taken a crazy turn. Then the Dow moved to buy. At that point, we all took our fingers off the board. It is as if we had been released. At that very moment, the fire that we had going flared up brightly and then extinguished. The logs that were in the pit were just smoldering as if someone or something had put it out. All of this happened within seconds, causing extreme panic to set in. We all jumped up confused from the phenomenon that we had just witnessed. It was now pitch black. Just when I thought things could not get any creepier, sticks and branches could be heard snapping right on the other side of the tree line that we were just yards from. That was enough to send us all into a full-blown sprint towards Sean's back door. It was so dark, I prayed I didn't trip and fall because I did not know what would be coming up behind me. I was the last one to the back door. But before I walked inside, something told me to look back to where we had just run from. In the void of the darkness, multiple pairs of glowing red eyes could be seen looking right back at me. They were not coming forward anymore, yet seemed to hover in the area where the fire pit was. The hair stood up on the back of my neck and my skin was covered in goosebumps. What have we done, I thought. Did we just release something that we were not supposed to? We all left Sean's place that night, including Sean. He refused to sleep there by himself that night, being that his parents were out of town and he would have been there alone. Or would he have been? I let him crash at my place for that night, and when the morning came, I dropped him back off at his house before I had to go into work that day. I wasn't away for 10 minutes before Sean called, sounding even more scared than he did the prior night. When he told me the cause of his alarm, I adopted the same fear as him. With his voice shaking, he said, the board, mate, the board is somehow in the fire pit. How could that be, I thought. The table that the board sat on was at least six feet from the fire pit last night. So even if we knocked it over in our spontaneous escape, it was a solid chunk of wood. It couldn't fly that far into the fire pit. I was absolutely speechless. I didn't dare tell him about the red eyes that I had seen over there peering back at us last night. I asked if there was anything left of the board, seeing that the fire was out when we made our run for it. There was silence on the line for a few seconds. He said that the board was still intact, but that it was charred really bad. What he told me next still haunts me to this day. He said all the letters are gone from the board now, except G, M, and A. To this day, I refuse to use a Ouija board ever again. Spooky Moose here. I'd like to thank you all for listening tonight, and we'll have more stories coming for you soon. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.